Well, I've had a number of inquiries about how I process the images that I'm posting in these uh, blue-green Facebook uh, posts. So I thought I'd do a short video and show you a little bit of the workflow that I incorporate into that. So let's dive right into it. All right, so I've opened up now in Adobe Bridge. Bridge is sort of the browsing uh, component of uh, Adobe's Photoshop suite. So I have a couple of images loaded in here. Uh, you will notice that all of these images have a .nef extension. That's because these are Adobe raw or Nikon RAW images. Um, RAW images give you a much broader range in pulling in highlights or bringing up shadows. And in order to do that, you end up with a somewhat flatter image when you first come into uh, the, uh, the image. Uh, as you'll notice, uh, none of these have a, a whole lot of pop. Let me go ahead and open one of these images and bring it into Photoshop. And you notice uh, when I come into Photoshop, I automatically come into Camera Raw. Camera Raw is sort of the preprocessor for uh, Adobe's Photoshop and it allows you to make all kind of adjustments to your image and I will typically just take uh, the auto processing of the image and then load it directly in. We can always drop back into Camera Raw as a filter within Photoshop. So we're moving that image over into Photoshop and I'll do a Control Zero so my image goes full screen. And the as a rule, the norm Normally, the first thing I do is go into my plugins and go directly to Luminar 4. Luminar is software published by Skyloom Software, and it gives you a, uh, a lot of control over your image. All right, where you have popped up now in uh, Luminar 4, and you can see the auto intelligence uh, functions are available. I can scan over some of the uh, Luminar looks down here at the bottom and get an idea if I want to accept one of those, or I can go directly into the AI uh, enhance function within here. And as I move the slider over, look at how the uh, vitality of, of the image increases. It's just pulling in the, the full tonal range that was there in the image that you didn't actually see in the, the, the base image. Uh, I have the option to enhance the sky if I want to, but on this particular image, I, I don't think that is really needed. As a rule, I will almost always add some uh, structure to the image and I will go in to the details enhancer because I know uh, my particular camera and the image sensor on it uh, can support improving the sharpness of the image through software. I'll go into the landscape enhancer and if I had haze in the image uh, I could make adjustments here. Uh, I really don't need to do that in, in this image. Uh, I can go into uh, the uh, golden hour filter and just add in a, a little of that sunlight you get during the, uh, the magic hour toward the end of the day. Uh, the foliage enhancer allows you to bring the pop out in the, the grass and the other foliage in your image. So I will free frequently do a uh, at least a minor adjustment there and then I'll pop that back into Photoshop and using these uh, applications 
like Luminar as a plug-in within Photoshop allows me to use Photoshop as the the basis for all of my processing, but allows me to pop out and do these other enhancements. Now we're round tripping and here's our image that came in uh, out of Luminar. So the other filter that I like to use from Skyloom is their Aurora HDR filter. And HDR uh, is a program that you can use uh, to combine multiple exposures of one image or take one single image like I'm doing here and optimize the dynamic range of that particular photograph. So as, as you can see up here, it's uh, doing all of its neat things, final touches to make it awesome. I, I love their terminology, but it pops it right in. And as you can see, the dynamic range of that image is profoundly improved and I very seldom need to enhance beyond that point. So I'll go ahead and apply that filter and round trip this back into Photoshop as it's exporting the image up here. Uh, I have uh, a number of applications open so I can record this image so it's taking a little bit longer than than normal, but it'll pop right back into here. At this juncture, I will typically go in and I'll look. A lot of times you will have uh, a very slight purple or green haze around some of the angular portions of an image. That's called a chromatic aberration. So I can go into camera raw at this point in time and deal with those, bring that same area back up. And as you can see, I've got a slight purple uh, area up here and I can kind of move that filter around until that goes away. And if I see a, uh, a green cast that I'm picking up in areas of the picture, I can adjust that out as well and then approve it and take it back in. And I do my control zero to get back. And a lot of times I like to enhance the image just a bit uh, because I think they come in a little underexposed and flat when I'm coming out of uh, HDR. So I will often go into the uh, adjustments here and I'll just brighten it up a touch and give it just a, a, a touch more of contrast and improve it. So that's the basic process I use to enhance these images. I hope it has been helpful to you as you uh, move forward with your photography. And with that, we'll kind of wrap it up. Well, I hope that gives you an idea of how I process my pictures. I'm not saying it's the right way, but it's the way I do it. Good luck with all of your shooting and shoot a lot and post often.